Well, good evening to you and how are you doing? Um, we are back again on advancing the cause. Uh, this evening, we're going to be talking sports this evening. We're talking sports this evening. Um, but first of all, let me apologize for missing you last week. You know, there are so many things happening and we have to be here, there and everywhere. But I do miss you when we don't have, when we don't have our programs. I do miss you. And I'm sure you miss me too. But you know what? Um, we're keeping this alive. Advancing the cause is going to continue to be there to advance the cause until we can have our causes justly um, fixed, until democracy is truly addressed, until freedom of expression and freedom of association is truly expressed and allowed we will continue to advance the cause. And so I want to send out good night greetings to quite a lot of our friends. I'm not going to call you individually, but I'm going to just say hi to our friends who are watching us from Switzerland, those who are watching us from Turkey, those who are watching us from right around the Caribbean. Good evening to you, and I'm trusting that you had a good day. Um, those who are watching us from North America, good evening to you. And for those who are watching us right here in Guyana, in Georgetown, in Burbies, in Bartica. How y'all doing? Good night to you. And I'm happy that you're here with us. I know lots and lots of you have been messaging me to ask whether we're on this evening. And so, yes, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell everybody, Advancing the Cause is on. And we're going to be talking a lot tonight. But, you know, very quickly, let, let me share with you uh, some highlights of this evening's program. And so we saw here in the last budget, which was just about two months ago, um, where we saw $4 billion was allocated to Gaisuko. $4 billion allocated to Gaisuko. But you know what? The workers, they were only paid, staff was only paid on the 31st of January, of uh, March, sorry. On the 31st of March is when staff received their salaries. Man, all you tell me, what really happening? What really going on here? Where is the Minister of Labor in all of this? When workers are being paid on the last day of the month, when there are stipulated days allocated for, for staff, for employers um, to, be, to pay their employees. And, and this is the government payday, you know, that are listed, the government pay dates that are listed. And, and the workers there were paid on the 31st of March for the month of March. What happened to the monies that we, we allotted there for Gaisuko? Where is the Minister of Agriculture, the man who stands in Parliament and who stands everywhere to talk about we're going to bring sugar alive again. We're going to do this. We care about the sugarcane workers. We care about what is happening about at Gaisuko. And you're paying these people on the 31st? You know, and, and this is what I don't understand. When we have these guys and these girls who would stand up in parliament behind that podium because they have lots of cameras facing them and, and they speak very glorious. And they give the Guyanese people the impression that they so much love them. They so much care for them. But in reality, they don't. They don't care for the Guyanese people. Because if they care for Guyanese people, if they cared for Guyanese people, then you wouldn't have people being paid on the 31st of the month. You wouldn't have Guyanese people in long lines at the passport office. And, you know, while, while I'm going, I'm, I'm going to let me complete Guy Suko. CEO, fix it. Mr. Mustafa, fix it. Minister of Labor, Joseph Hamilton, fix it. Let the people get their monies early. People got things to do. They come there, they labor, and they must be paid on time. Don't wait for the 31st. I'm sure the CEO did not receive his salary on the 31st. I am almost certain that board members did not receive their, their stipends or honorarium, whatever you want to call it, on the 31st of the month. And we got all kinds of things going on, big fancy lunches. You got all kinds of things happening with these big boys. And the poor man got to suffer. But I'm going to come to the suffering part a little later. I got a nice story for tell you all about this suffering part. 
I'll come to it a little later. But here is it we have, um, now we have the residents in Port Kaituma. Here at four miles, the residents there, they're picketing. They're having peaceful picket, picketing exercises going on. What do you think they're picketing for? Electricity, they were out of electricity for the longest while. And whenever they get the electricity, it's, it's in limited, a limited quantity or a limited span of, of having electricity and, and no water. But this is the government who talk about, we care and we love and what we're doing here and what we're doing there. I mean, in these enlightened days, in 2023, when we had a budget that talks about how much, 500 and something billion dollars, I think that's, that, that was the budget we had. And people still here can't have full supply of water. They can't have electricity. What's going on with the new Dubai of the Caribbean? And you see, this is what we talk about. The few at the top there, they live in life in luxury. But the masses, they're suffering. So the people in, in Port Kaituma, the people pick it in now for water and electricity. What is Sheikh Bashk doing? And, and since I'm on water, I, I have to tell you this, this experience that I would have had. GWI sent me within a two months span, two bills, one for 33,000 and one for 30,000. And they're claiming that I have a meter when I have no water meter. So the first bill was paid. Of course, you know, that bill was paid because um, my folks didn't want no embarrassment. So one of them going to pay the bill, the $33,000. In less than a month, another one came for $30,000. Now the folks from GWI, they came to cut off my water. Imagine that they came to disconnect my water. So let me tell you, let me be honest. I said to the young man, if you cut my water off now, in three minutes, I'll have it reconnected. You cut it off in three minutes, I'll have it reconnected. Don't bill me for any water meter when I don't have a water meter. And this is the scam that they go around the place with, you know, billing people talking about some water meter that they have registering them and giving them some reading and, and charging poor and ordinary Guyanese citizens plenty, 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 plenty monies. Now, I went into GWI because the young man came. He walked the entire front of my yard. He couldn't find on the carpet there in front of the yard. He couldn't find a water meter. He checked next door. He couldn't find a water meter there. He came into my yard. I invited him into my yard. He came in. He looked all around. I allowed him to walk around. I, I, you know, I got dogs and so I tied the dogs. And I allowed him to walk all around. He couldn't find the water meter that they were billing me from. So the young man said, well, maybe it's somewhere over on the other side, maybe over by your neighbor. I said, young man, I think you got sense. Plus, you're big. Don't tell me foolishness. Just make what you're saying make sense. My water meter can't be over in my neighbor's yard or in front of where my neighbor is living on his carpet or somewhere there. However, he called into the office and they said, no, don't disconnect the water. Um, ask the, the customer to come into the office. I went into the office. I am still waiting on GWI to tell me what is happening. Since then, they ain't got to disconnect water anymore. But you can hear the showdown with me and them. I mean, what is Sheikh Bash doing? You know, I went to um, Providence, uh, Perseverance, right behind Providence there. I, I, went, I went there. And I saw a big fancy house put up there. I don't know if my operator has it there. But I saw a big fancy house. As a matter of fact, it's a double lot with two houses being constructed. A big fancy one and another fancy one. And I'm hearing that it belonged to somebody at GWI. I am wondering if that's where our monies are going to build big fancy mansions. You're billing people wrongfully and you're using our monies to build big fancy mansions. I am wondering if, if that's where it's going. I mean, I ain't calling no name. Whoever house it is, <laughs> they got to know. 
but I ain't calling no name because, you know, they're quick to sue you. They're quick to send you all kind of fancy things. But let me say to you, I saw the two houses being, being put up there. And I want to know if it's me monies y'all taking to put up there. Y'all collecting my monies to put up there. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I ain't paying no more. And the 33000 that I paid you, you better make sure you stretch it. You better make sure you stretch it. And you see, this is why we are missing people like Dr. Van West Charles. This is why we, we missing these people. This is why we missing these people. This is why we missing David Patterson and Annette Ferguson. Because when they were at the ministry of, um, what was it? I can't even remember the ministry. <laughs> We, we blackout was a thing of the past. Power outages was a thing of the past. I, I often see David Patterson putting up there every minute that they're spiting him because it's every minute he got a blackout. So the people in, in Port Kaituma there, they're protesting. Just now, the people in, in Sophia are going to be protesting. The people in Alexander Village are going to start protesting. Everywhere, people are going to be protesting because every now and again, it's, it's power outage. Now, these people in Port Kaituma got long, long power outage, but they're going to fix it right because we got oil money and they can use it rather than, uh, you know, I, I just noticed all these ministers got two, who ain't got two bodyguards, got three bodyguards, got eight, nine, ten bodyguards, the president, 20, how much, wherever. Don't take our taxpayers' dollars and do foolishness with it. Spend the money on the people. You're putting up big fancy structures, giving people the impression as if so much is happening, but the masses are still suffering, still suffering the masses. People still can't afford to go to the shop to buy a couple of things because by the time you put out a $5,000 there, you get two or three items with it, if so many, and it finished. As a matter of fact, if you were to buy a five pound tin of milk, the $5,000 can't buy that. So you understand what we're dealing with. But we'll get a little more in, into, into, into those kinds of things. Uh, I noticed that we have our um, Miss World, Diana, taking London, uh, the red carpet in London, and we want to, to wish her every success. You know, when our folks go out there, we want to, we want to wish them well, and, and we want to pump them up and we want to, to rally behind them because they put us on show. They make us look good. And so our girl there, we want to, to wish her every success and we trust that um, she is going to fly the flag of Guyana very, very high. And, and, and our coat of arms and our motto is going to be on display which says one people, one nation, one destiny. Now this one Guyana foolishness that I hear going around the place. This new, some kind of concoction they're putting together now, but one Guyana, which giving people a whole lot of diary and all kind of thing. We want that. One people, one nation, one destiny. That's what we have as, as our, as our um, motto. Don't come to change our motto. And besides that, I, I've recognized that over the last week or so, we're having so many accidents. When it's not accident, it's... it's a murder here and a murder there. Look, people, the time has come for us to live together in love, for us to live in peace. Don't allow these jokey politicians, those in government, to tell you a whole lot of nonsense. Don't allow them to divide our people. We have been living peacefully. Don't allow them to, 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 to influence you and to cause you to look at your neighbor who, whose hair is of a different texture than yours, to look at them differently. Because I can tell you one thing, if you cut my hand and you cut an Indian sister's hand and an Amerindian brother's hand, what you will see pouring out? Red blood. So the only thing that makes us different is whatever texture of hair we have, but we have the same blood running through our veins. And if I get sick tomorrow morning and I have to go into hospital and, and I require blood, sometimes you don't know is who blood you're getting. So I don't know why we're allowing these, these people to divide us. And, and you notice, every time the, the opposition is around, uh, people get, you know, they don't want to talk. 
They don't want to talk to the opposition. You know, I've, I've been around many, many of the ministries. I go there very often to the ministries to, to conduct my own business and, and to do my own fact finding. And sometimes the staff, they're so scared to talk to you because they don't want people to see them talk to you. The next thing you know, they're pressuring you. And, and these are the people who talk about democracy and, and freedom of speech and, and, and all kinds of crazy things, you know? And, and yet they're instilling fear in our people. Look, folks, we've got to end this. We can end this very soon. And we will let our friend Ali know and Jack Dio know that the nonsense they're doing, we Guyanese people, we will change it. Because we don't want to be separated. We don't want to have to hate. We want to live as one people. And so the murders, let's quiet down on them. Let's talk. We don't have to use violence. We don't have to cuss out. Let's talk. Let's be respectful with what we do. And so we, we saw, uh, uh, what, a 23-year-old man, he was... Um, he was found dead in, in, in Bath settlement there. Some crazy, some crazy talks there. And the family, the family suspects that he was murdered. And then we had in 2017, there, there was a, a farmer murdering, uh, admitted, he, well, that matter is now in the high court. And, and he admitted to, to killing and burning his workers because um, he believed that they stole his goat. I, I mean, come on, a goat you're killing a man for? Some, some, something is wrong, something is wrong, something is wrong. And then we saw a uh, uh, business magnet, Mr. Mohammed, and this is senior Mohammed. Um, he's hiring or he's hired uh, a US lobby firm and, and they, they are going to be seeking into information on US visa refusal. Well, uh, I mean, I don't know what has caused that, but, but the thing is so, it, it, you see all these lobbying forms, then we, we, know, we know what can happen later. Though. Other people can hire lobbying farms to do things for them. Of course, they've been, they, the PPPC, they've hired lobbying farms to spread all kinds of wild rumor in the U.S. and all over the place and so on. And they're quick to condemn people, you know. Every minute they're abusing out Rickford Burke when Rickford Burke speaking the truth, you know. They're abusing Rickford Burke out. They abuse Mark Ben Scobb. They abuse, everybody they're abusing. Um, they're the only ones who, who are telling the truth. They're the only ones who know what they're supposed to do. Um, oh, yes, I have uh, Winston Henry watching me from East Dependence. Good night to you, Winston, and how you and your family doing. You know what? We got it going on here, and we will continue to advance the cause, continue to advance the cause. And we have um, who? Uh, Jacobs Ward. She's also watching us, and, and we want to say good night, good night to you. And we have Ms. Ms. Chelsea Barton. Good night to you too. Tell your friends advancing the cause is on and we're talking business. We're going to be doing sports in a few. As soon as our guest gets here, we're going to be doing sports. But we can talk a little bit more. Um, have you ever wondered what has happened with the commissioning of the Judicial Service Commission and the Public Service Commission? Why, why are we not having these, these two commissions in place? Why are we not having them? Is it somebody spiting these, these people? Or is it that we're waiting for, for some people to retire, the time to come for them to retire, and then we're going to establish a judicial service commission so that we can have, quote unquote, our people, our people being placed in the various positions? I, I've recognized that the chief magistrate, um, she has or will be very soon proceeding on pre-retirement leave. And, you know, she would have been made a, a very fine, she would have made a very fine judge if we had the Judicial Service Commission in place. And, you know, this is, this is one of the things about the PPP government. They always seek to stifle people. They don't like people to progress. They enjoy stifling people. They only talk about, oh, you see what we're doing? You see, we love people. They're my friends. But they like to stifle people and, and, and they like to have you there on, on hold where they can hold you and, and dwindle you like this. They have you shaking like this. That's what they like to do. And so they've not decided, even though the leader of the opposition, Mr. Norton, would have given the green light 
for the appointment of the chancellor and the chief justice, they ain't doing it, you know, they ain't doing it. And he did that based on what the constitution says. He has been calling for the appointment of these two young ladies, but they ain't doing it. But I guess they're waiting for them to retire and then they can bring two fresh persons who they want, who they think can carry out their business. Because if you check out what is happening, everywhere has been politicized. Now, almost everywhere has been politicized. Don't talk about the Guyana police force. Oh, no, don't, don't talk. Don't mention that. Viewer, yes, I understand. But don't mention that. Everybody know what's happening there. Everybody know what's happening there. I see the Guyana Defense Force coming out every minute on a limb and they're throwing out something there. Uh, but we watch in. We watch in. Oh, don't bother, don't bother with the private sector commission. Oh, no, 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 don't, don't, don't let's go there. I, I understand. And you see, this is what I'm talking about. Our people understand the story. They know the story. So if our friend and Jack, you think people don't understand what's happening, People understand exactly what's happening. They know just what's happening. And, and I'm seeing um, Joyan, Joyan Beckers is saying PPP is Guyana's national disaster. And I fully agree with you. I fully agree with you. They are indeed our, our national disasters. But we can get rid of them disasters. And so let me encourage you as we are on this, let me encourage you to go out there and vote when we have those elections, when we have our local government elections, ensure you go out there and vote. And, and you know this big bluff talk about, uh, we will control Georgetown and we will take over Linden and New Amsterdam. I don't know when that will happen. I don't know when that will happen. Somebody smoking cheap weed somewhere. And, and, and it's causing them to say whatever they, they're saying. But it will not happen. And, and I'm seeing Mr. Peter saying, we will vote APNU all the time. And yes, that's what people will do. And, and people, persons, the citizens in this country have recognized that what transpired at the 2020 elections was not real. As a matter of fact, the recount showed us what transpired there. But of course, you know, the, the bigger folks then, they allowed what happened to have happened. All, all these, these big pump, Mike Pompeo. And so where, what, I wonder where is he now though? Well, we know what's happening with Trump. What is happening with, with Mike Pompeo? All the pomp and scene and ceremony that he had, where, where is he now? I, 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 I'm trying to figure that out. But we can, we can find out about him in, in, another, in, another, in another episode. We are going to find out about him. But I, I want to share with you very quickly. Um, today, Wednesday, the Guyana Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Of course, you know that I'm an Adventist. Eh? I hope you know that. I'm an Adventist. I'm born a Seventh-day Adventist too. And so, yes, uh, and I want to remind the persons, when Christ was on earth, he walked the streets. He demanded justice for the people. He fixed the wrong and made them right. He, did, he never said wrong was right, but he fixed the wrong. He fed those who were hungry. He clothed those who were naked. And when quite a lot of people came and they accused the persons of, of things that weren't true, he, Jesus Christ, he rebuked them and reminded them and asked them, he who is without sin, let them cast the first stone. And you know when they brought that woman who they said they caught in adultery and they brought her to Jesus? So as an Adventist, I understand that I have to stand up for what is right. I have to speak for those who cannot speak for themselves. So when you hear me speak and when you hear me being frank and blunt, don't think that I'm being rowdy or don't think that I don't, I, I just want to oppose things. I stand for what is right. I stand for justice. 
so we had the, the Adventist conference this afternoon. Um, we, they, they were having the opening ceremony for the conference session. And you know what? Uh, yes, of course, the, the opposition leader was invited there and he was invited to, to give, um, to bring greetings uh, to the Adventist community. And so we have delegates from uh, Burbies, Esipuebo and Demerara. And of course, we have quite a lot of overseas dignitaries there. And so the opposition leader was there and um, he spoke to the theme that says, anchored in his promises, advancing in his purpose. That's the theme for this. It's going to be an entire week of conference session. And, and this is where the Adventist Church, um, the membership exercise uh, democracy, and, and they vote for new leaders every four years. We have national elections every five years, but in the Adventist Church, we have um, conference session every four years. So at the end of this session, there's going to be a new executive that is going to be elected to run the Adventist the Guiana Conference for the next four years. Operator, do you have that, that, um, that tape there to play for us? Where we had the leader of the opposition there, and yes, I want I yes, of course, the leaders of the the leader of the opposition, the Honorable um, Aubrey Norton, member of Parliament. He, of course, he 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 went to Sunday school. Of course, he he's a believer, and and so let me allow you to hear what he had to say there this afternoon. A vast political experience, a professor, a man adept with international relations in a landslide victory, became leader of the PNCR in December 2021. And in April 2022, he was appointed as a member of the National Assembly. We're happy to welcome him and his team. And I want to recognize Dr. Karen Cummings, of course, parliamentarian and a member of our church. Happy to have the team with you, Mr. Coretta MacDonald, another parliamentarian. And uh, it is my delight to invite the Honorable Aubrey Norton to come on up at this time and to bring us some greetings, brief remarks. Good afternoon. Master of Ceremony. President of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana, Dr. Evan Ali, members of parliament, all present. It is indeed a privilege to be here today. I've looked at your team and it says, anchored in his promises, advancing in his purpose. And so, when I saw the theme, I thought out of necessity, I had to anchor my presentation in the theme. <laughs> and when I do that, I remember my days as a young man going to Sunday school. And in those days, there were certain things you heard regularly. God and love, they went together. God and the people, they went together. God and good character, they went together. And so one of the first things I want to do is to urge you to anchor whatever you do in those elements of godliness. But when I was growing up, and I want to say a special thank you to Pastor Bowman. Many of you wouldn't know, but I served as an office assistant at age 15. And one of my mentors was Pastor Bowman. Glad to see him around until now. As I was going through the preparation, I found an interesting point in Psalms 11, 7. And I quote it. Lord is righteous. He loves justice. In Isaiah it says, learn to do right and seek justice. 
And then the Psalms 802.3 says, give justice to the weak and fatherless. Maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute. I believe if you anchor your discussions in these directives of God, you can go no wrong in Guyana. You know, I once heard that he who governs generally, he does not hunger. And so he who governs has power. And he who has hunger doesn't have power. Therefore, the responsibility devolves on the church, including the Seventh-day Adventists, to ensure that power serves those who hunger, those who are afflicted, those who are destitute. You will serve our Lord properly if our people come first. I heard the pastor saying that they're not involved in politics. Well, I don't want to involve you in politics, but I want to say this to you. It is your duty to ensure you impact politics in the name of justice. Because your Bible and our God, they both demand it. And so while I do not see you as being political or being involved in politics, I see you as a civil society organization that has a role to play in politics and that role is to bring the teachings of the Bible to he who is in politics to ensure that they live by those words. And so be careful. I am not inviting you into politics. I'm inviting you to influence politics because it is said that when the righteous acts, and the righteous influence politics, then life is better. And what we seek is a better life. A lot of times, we run away from reality. But we must face reality. Our reality is, one of our biggest problems is poverty. And I believe the church must continue to play a role in first the reduction in poverty and ultimately the eradication of poverty. We in the opposition have set ourselves what we call an agenda based on people-centered development. We will advocate for the rights of people. We believe that Christianity in general sets out clearly that man should be governed by law and by God. And therefore, again, you're obligated to respect the rule of law and to respect the teachings of the Holy Book. I want to wish you all the best in your conferential deliberations. I believe once you're guided by your team, you come to it with sincerity and love, then you will succeed. You are meeting at a very critical time. You are meeting at a time when the government and the opposition are united in our position against Venezuela. And, and I do believe, I do believe that the voice of the church can help in consolidating, even if it is that, one unity. I urge you to move forward in unity, in purpose, and remember, we set out to achieve one people, one nation, one destiny. Your contribution to that is inescapable and invaluable. I wish you the best. Thank you.
Good. So you got it there for yourself, the leader of the opposition addressing that, that forum. And you know what, what was important about what the leader said is that if we are going to talk about rights and we're going to talk about justice, the Bible speaks about it. And so he was admonishing the church that while you are not political, you should be able to influence politics in the country. You should be able to influence politicians. You should be able to speak out when injustices are being done to the people in this country. And so I want to say to our churches, not only the Adventist church, but our churches across our religious people, our religious leaders, don't stay quiet when you see injustices are being meted out to our people. Speak up. And so I, I noticed my friend there, Joanne Beckles, she's on a roll. Joanne, and I like you, you know, I like you. When Joanne says that we all know when the righteous rule, when they rule, the nation rejoices. But when we have the wicked ones, the nation weep. And, and that's what we are having in Guyana, you know. We having weeping going on in Guyana here. You know how many people can't sleep? They don't have a room. They don't have a house. They don't have anywhere to lay their heads. Some of them, you find them on the pavement. But we'll talk about more of that. And Joy, and thank you so much for, for being there. And thank you for encouraging your other friends to be there. I, I, I noticed um, Joy Ann was saying that the PPP is a blight and a curse and something like that to our nation. But our God will bring that Ill illegitimate regime to an abrupt end. For God himself will lift up and he will put them down. So... We are going to work towards that. But you know, God wouldn't do for us if we can't do for ourselves. And so I want to say to you folks, we got to get up and get. We have to get up and get. We have to speak out about these injustices. You notice from since when, 2020, the teachers have not been heard. The teachers' cries have not been heard. The teachers have been reaching out and they've been resubmitting and submitting and resubmitting their proposals. And up to now, Efren Ali and, and his Minister of Education, Priya Manik Chan, they can't look at it up to now. The teachers will deal with you, don't worry. The teachers will teach you. I mean, it's disgusting. When you don't see your nation molders as being important, if there wasn't a teacher, then we couldn't have Priya Manik Chan or Efren Ali, Efren or Efren Muhammad Ali, whatever is his name. We couldn't have him, but they're very disrespectful to teachers. And, and you know what? They, they, they give the, the impression that they don't want to deal with teachers because you have Coretta McDonald there. But Coretta McDonald will continue to be in your faces because you know what? In 2018, Coretta McDonald was there and you applauded it. So in 2020 and 2021 and 2022, it can't be different because we stand on principles. So you better find money to pay the teachers. And you see the jumping around that, that, that Priya Manik Chan doing all over the place. And the teachers who are at CPC on that online program, they're suffering. You better fix it right. You need to fix that right. Teachers cannot learn like that online. The entire program you're putting online. Why you can't get them back into the classroom? And then you want to jump around the place to talk about, oh, we, we have just trained how many thousands. You like big numbers, but you don't like quality. You like quantity, but you don't like quality. Teachers, those teachers in training are suffering. When they're not suffering from shortage of lecturers, they're suffering because they don't have electricity, they don't have internet. Fix it. Fix it. Imagine in this oil-rich nation, we paying our lecturers $1,200 and $1,000 per hour. That's why we can't have lecturers coming. Who wasting time to come to work for $1,000 per hour? When you can go and have your lessons and you have five students at your lessons, who paying $2,000 an hour?
these students, these athletes of ours, to go to the Bahamas, they ain't got enough money. Once it's track and field. When it's cricket, we see thousands and millions and hundreds of millions of dollars being poured out into cricket. But when we have track and field, it's a little pittance throwing out. Why? And then you want to talk about one Guyana? Where? When? You want to talk about love? You want to talk about practicing what is in the Bible? I heard the, the president talk at, 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 the, at the opening of the Adventist um, conference session there where he spoke about love and justice and democracy. They, sometimes you wonder if these men are for real. You know? When he stood there to talk about, oh, how do you go to bed to sleep at night when, when, you, um, when you have water to drink and you have food to drink and your neighbors don't have any i want to ask the same man Irfan ali how he could sleep at night when they had people bulldozing the people's house and breaking them down at mocker and they had to sleep on the tents how he was feeling you see these these fellas is why you tell them some things you know these fellas are real hypocrites the boys and the girls real hypocrites it's like King Liar, Roseanne. Y'all know who's Roseanne, right? Y'all know who's y'all know who's Roseanne? B Roseanne Jagdio. <laughs> well, I know it's plenty of you didn't know. Yes. When that man stand up to talk about when they were in opposition, he stood up. Yes, I'm coming off of this.
them, but she forgot that she started closing those estates. As a matter of fact, they got estates that will close again. But they love to jump up with a whole lot of them. You know? Now, back to sports. Um, operator, I notice the folks are saying that they're not having, they're not hearing, no sound, no sound. Maybe we can fix that. Well, I, I guess it, it's okay now. But this is the man, yes, and the man, John, thank you so much. The man spoke about judgment, you know, and that God, God listening, God was listening. It's like when Priya was in Parliament the other day and Priya said, oh, we have to, to conduct ourselves in a better way, something to that effect, because the young people are listening to us, the young people are watching us. But this same girl, Priya, didn't know that the young people was watching and the young people, they were listening to us, to her, when she cussed out the U.S. ambassador at his own residence. She didn't know that. She didn't know when she called people a fool, tell people they stupidity in parliament, that the young people listening and the young people watching. She ain't know a lot of things when she scream out in parliament and so on. And oh, you hit me here and in my some in my tummy, some some foolishness. She ain't know that the young people watching she all the time, but conveniently, they just know certain things. Conveniently, our friend know that God is going to judge and something, something, something. No sound. I hope you're get I hope you're hearing me now. If you're hearing us now, just tell us yes, you're hearing us. But these are the people. Who would jump up there to talk about all kinds of things, but they're not practicing it. They're not practicing it. But let's go back to sports. Our athletes, they went out there. Operator, maybe you can show us, maybe you can show us that. Um, maybe one or two of the races. Our athletes went out there. They poured their hearts out to represent the golden arrowhead. But the treatment that is being that was meted out to them. Oh my gosh. You know, I, I saw there the, 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 the contingent from Barbados and the contingent from Trinidad and Jamaica. And we got oil money, you know. And that's the treatment we give into our athletes. But thank God for our Guyanese nationals who are living in, in, in the Bahamas. They were able to come together and, and offer our folks, our, our children, the support that they needed to get food for them and, and, and water and whatever else, you know, they were able to get to them. Why do we have to treat our athletes like that? Um, Operator, yes, you, you can show us, you can show us um, maybe one or two of the races. So you us can see. Jamara Patterson flew out of the blocks in lane number three, four, Grenada. Trying to close in on Casey and Paul of Jamaica in lane four. Ricky and Russell, the leading Jamaican, goes steadily down the back stretch. Van Court of the Bahamas, the tall figure speeding in lane number five, tries to catch up to the Jamaican Ricky and Russell. Kixie and Powell, the second Jamaican, right in the mix as well. Powell, Van Court, and Russell. They are about to make their way into the straightaway. Kixie and Powell, Van Court of Bahamas, Ricky and Russell of Jamaica. Russell goes into overdrive. Valcourt challenges her. Russell ahead of Valcourt. Powell is well back in second. Valcourt is fighting, but Russell holds on to win the gold medal. Curves the gold to complement an already outstanding season for this outgoing senior 5184. The record at 5130 survives, but Final with Tyrone Concliffe of the Bahamas in second position. The Tond. first lap. Delana Todd of Jamaica in third. The Trimagonian Leacock in fourth position with the second Jamaican in fifth position at this stage. Todd of Jamaica now to the front. Lee Price Cock of second. Trinidad and Tobago makes a move as well. Price in second. Normally a good tactician. Ton of Jamaica 
has the lead. Price of Jamaica in second. Lee Cock of Trinidad and Tobago holding the bronze medal position at this stage. The Guyanese is dangerous. The poise Javon Roberts as well. Down the home stretch they come. Rashidi, Price, left back, and now Roberts strikes the front. Javon Roberts wins gold for Guyana in the under 17 boys. 800 meters, the Trinidadian Lee Cock snatches the bronze medal as well. Told you Javon Roberts would be dangerous. Left it late, timed his run to perfection, and strikes gold in 156-64. Didn't finish last year, but no one top. A flying last 100 meters, circles the leaders, and gives him a clear and singular hold on the gold medal. Wonderful last 100 for Roberts of Guyana. Time off the pace for most of it. Yes, and so you, you recognize there our young boy, Javon, there doing for us. But you know what? The young man didn't even had a gun, a flag to hold. You see the, the, the athlete from Trinidad, they're holding a flag of Trinidad. The boy didn't even had a flag to hold. We saw our, our medalist going up there, the young lady going up there to receive her gold medal. She didn't even got a flag. What are we really doing? Huh? And we, you're talking sports, and, and the sports minister would go to parliament and stand up and pump his chest up to do to say nonsense. Huh? Charity begins at home. Do it right at home. You know, when we have the, the, the national track and field championship, it's a whole lot of go round and come around and go so and come back so. And, and it is the largest games that we have in our country where over 15 plus 100 athletes can assemble at one point. And, and, and we, treat, we sometimes treat them anyhow. Last year, we celebrated the 60th championship. And, and it was almost a disaster. As a matter of fact, the officials had to stage a protest because they were told they weren't going to be paid. I mean, what are we doing? Priya Manik Chan, you better fix it right for this year's championship. And, and there is no collaboration between the Ministry of Education and, and the Ministry of Sports and, and Ministry of Local Government. No collaboration between these three ministries. Look. If y'all can't support our children, just let the parents know you can't support them. And parents are going to do whatever they can do to seek sponsorship for their children and to ensure that their children are treated well. But you know what? These same people, the chairman of the National Sports Commission, the Minister of Youth, Sports and Culture, and all of them go flock the airport when those athletes return. They can flock the airport to welcome them. But you know, if I were some of those parents, I would chase them. I would chase them. I would tell them, don't come to take out pictures with our children because you didn't ensure that our children were treated right. It is disgusting. And you know what? Every time the PPP is in office, we have this kind of issue, these kinds of problems every time the PPP is in office, because they don't see athletics, track and field as being important. Cricket is important to them. I mean, I have no issues with cricket, but if you're gonna pour out into cricket, you must put into track and field. If you're gonna pour into golf and cycling and whatever else and tennis and so on, you must put in, into track and field because that right there is saying to us that you're discriminating. That right there is saying to us that you don't like one set of people. And don't come to tell me about love. We don't want to hear anything about love because you don't love our people. You don't love our children when you treat them that way. You have our children stranded, huh? and you are taking monies to go here, there, and all over the place. Minister, minister, wife, minister, father-in-law, minister, this person, all of y'all traveling on taxpayers' money going to Dubai. Huh? Minister sister, minister this person going all over the place on taxpayers' money. And our children who got the potential 
to do stuff can't do it because you're not providing the monies for them or enough monies for them. But I'm waiting to hear if we have whatever, what scholarship are going to be given to these children. I'm waiting to hear if they, someone of them can get a piece of land. I'm waiting to hear if you're going to set up some bank account for them. I'm waiting to hear what you're going to do for these children. I mean, where are we? Huh? Big oil rich country. Yes, Karen, welcome. Big oil rich country. And this is how our athletes are being treated. Big oil rich country. And we can't provide for, for contingent of, of whatever the number is, maybe 25 or how many children went out there. What are we really doing? Are we really serious about sports? And this is why many parents don't want their children to take part, to participate in, in, in these kinds of games, these track and field championship, because they're saying it, it, it carries you nowhere, sit down and burn the books and go get 9, 10, 11, 12 subjects. Because when you pour out your heart into athletics, the government don't pay you any mind. And, and the parents are right. If the government at the top, they're not showing the interest, then why you, why you think parents must, must want to do? But you know what? Parents love this. Parents love this and they, 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 they want to fulfill the, the desires of their children. Before we go into anything else, I'm going to show you another one. We have another video to show you, another clip to show you. This is real madness. Is the time to be Two Jamaicans in the lineup, Jody and Daly and Rosalie Gallimore. Daly has gone out quickly. The Ketishan, Dictionary Thomas, also moving well to the first 200 meters. She looks really good in qualifying, Dictionary Thomas, and she's looking strong again in this final. Bermudas, Dickinson. Also trying to get into the picture. Down the stretch they come. Jody and Daly. On Jamaica. Ahead of Dishane Thomas. The Guyanese finishing fast as well. Springer. Springer on the outside. Springer steps forward and strikes gold for Guyana. 54-25 on the clock. She timed it beautifully. We didn't get the chance to see her in qualifying. It's been a long road, some would say a long flight to this, but she has it. What a moment for this guy and his young lady. Wow, big, big finish to get past the top two who seem to be running away to gold and silver. Never over till it's over and Springer steps up to take gold for Guyana. Really, really a dramatic finish knowing that she had to do so yes, there we saw uh, Miss Springer bringing home another gold for Guyana. And I, I am wondering what is going to be the reward for these young men and women, our children, when they return home. We don't want Big Photo up alone. We want you to do things for them. Put some scheme in place where they can be offered scholarship either to complete they're, they're, they're schooling at secondary school, or if they're at university, or if they're at the technical institute, put some system in place for them. Don't rush up to the airport to escort them and, and, and bring them down with, with big entourage. That's not what we want. We want to see you do things for them. These are our people. These are our children. And yes, our viewers understand that it's because these children are black children. And when you talk about that, they want to tell you that you're racist. But there's nothing racist in that. It is a fact that this is the way our children are treated once they're of a, of a political um, ethnic, ethnic grouping. This is the way you treat them. This is the way track and field is being treated. This is how they treat track and field. You know? But I'll be looking out to see. I'll be looking out to see what they will do when these, these athletes would have returned. But folks, I want to say to you, Guyana is we own. 
And like the, the, the leader of the opposition said in his message to the church there, we did agree on one front at this time, the issue between Guyana and Venezuela, we were united. And if we were to be united on other grounds, this country would be a beautiful country. We've heard the talks of power sharing, but you know what? The PDP are about greed and always want, and they're corrupt, and they're a set of rascals. But folks, again, let me say to you, these are our children, and we will stand up for them. These are our young people. These are these people, these young children are the future, Guyana's future, our leaders of tomorrow. And if we don't fix it right, they will not be able to do what we expect them to do. Um, uh, you know what? Uh, Joy, y'all don't bother with 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 uh, Dolid, Daljit, whatever, whatever. He got to come on our program to learn, so that's why he's here. He's got to come on this program to learn. So no matter with the foolish comments that he put in, he has to come here. That's why he's always here because he got to learn. He's coming here to learn. He can't go on the other forums to learn because they got nothing there to tell them. But sports is ours, and we will continue to ensure that we promote athletics track and field and so let me say to the sports minister this time put your money where your mouth is let's have more trainers let's have more coaches put monies put a system in place so that our athletes can go somewhere in the afternoons and they can do the reg their regular routines they can do some weights they can do whatever it is to make them better athletes so that they can represent our country and represent it well. I know you don't know that we had Olympic champions in our country before, persons who went to Olympics and they won medals for our country. I know that you don't know that. So let me enlighten your, 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 your trench here on the program here so that they can, they can relate that to you. And we can do it again, but we got to put proper systems in place and we need proper people to ensure that the systems that are in place, that they run smoothly. You notice what they're doing at, at McKenzie there in, Lin, in Linden there with the sports club? Rather than focusing on, oh, we don't have a problem with you doing a, 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 a multi-purpose center, but fix what was supposed to be there first. I know the people in Linden can give you all the hell of your lives. You're telling Nigel London he can't go into the, 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 the compound, he can't go on the field, he can't go there to see what is happening. I leave y'all in the hands of Cleveland, Thomas, and Nigel London. They're going to fix y'all business with the rest of the people in Linden. But back to what we were saying. When we talk in sports, we want to ensure that things go right in this country. So we can't talk sports and leave some of the disciplines out all of the disciplines we have to pay attention to. So while we are paying attention to cricket and squash and tennis and golf and cycling, we must pay attention to track and field. While we are paying attention to, to, to the races on, 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 on the, the tarmac there at South Dakota, we must pay attention to track and field. I, I noticed that we would have seen Quite a lot of statements coming out with regards to what transpired at, at the 50th um, Carifta Games with regards to the treatment of our athletes. I'm hoping that the um, AAG will come out and they will make a statement. And, and, and persons who are held, persons who are in default, that they are going to be dealt with.
I, you know, when you're having fun and you're talking, the real story, they do all kinds of things. They created all kinds of confusion in our studio here. But I want to say to you as we close, we have to think about this. Like I said earlier, we have sports, and so we need to fix the stories and get it right. We need to fix the stories and get it right. We need to, if we're going to deal with sports, then we need to look all the disciplines. And I was saying, these same athletes that we're treating very badly are the athletes who are going to be both on stage in another two years. Come and chase them. We can chase them now. We are going to chase them. Don't come to our communities and behave as if we are beggars and we will be looking for this crumb. You can give big monies to other people. Give us big monies when you come. You're giving big hampers to some communities. When you go to other communities, give big hampers too. So, my viewers, let me thank you for being here with us. Um, Joyan, good night again to you and everyone else. It's always a privilege to have you here with us. You make our day when advancing the cause is on. And to all of the other viewers who were there viewing us, thank you. Looking forward to seeing you next week. Uh, in the meantime, between now and then, stay safe. Be careful how you drive the roads. Be careful how you walk the streets. Uh, just say a good word to somebody. Um, and I'm going to copy this one from, from a boy, you know. He said, a smile. And I've been, all, I've been saying that all along. You don't know what people are going through. So when you go down the streets, a good morning, how are you today? A smile can change the whole thinking of somebody. It can change a situation. So let's be good Guyanese and let's remember we are one people, one nation, one destiny. God bless you. See you next week for more on advancing the cause. But we must fix that sports business. Good night. <laughs>